In this video, we create a simple TCP client, which can dynamically switch between two different servers. We use an inject node to send data to the TCP request. And connect the debug on its output. The payload we send is the word test. In the TCP request, we set the host to localhost and the port to 2000. If you want to connect to another device, you need to swap localhost with the IP address of your device. Before trying out the client, we need to create the TCP server. For that, we create a new flow and call it server. The first step in creating a server is the TCP in node. Here we want to listen on port 2000. We use a debug for the outgoing message. In the debug we select complete message object to show all the data. If you make a request using our client we see the received data in the debug window. We also see that we do not get an answer from the server. In the message object we see the IP address of the sender and the port used to send the request. In payload we see the send data displayed as a buffer. When clicking on the payload the node red editor automatically converts the text to a string. To answer the client we need the TCP out node. There we simply select reply to TCP. This option uses the host and port provided in the message object to answer the client. Now we see that we get an answer from the server, but the text is not a string. To convert the buffer to a string, we can use a function node. Here we simply use the toString method and set ASCII as a parameter. This converts our buffer to an ASCII string. The text is now displayed as a string in our debug window. On the server side, we can use a change to change the incoming payload to something else. Here we use this is server 2000 to make sure we are connected to the correct server. Using the return settings of the TCP request, we can remove the need to convert the string using a function node. Now let's take a look at the close settings. The close setting is used to make sure no package is lost during the request. One common misconception is that the timeout starts right after sending the request. However, the timeout starts after the client receives the first bit of data. If the timeout runs out and the client does not have the full answer, it will resend its request. When sending a string, you can also set the close method to when character is received. If we set this character to T, which is the first character of our string, we only receive the letter T. Using this option, the TCP connection closes after finding the character specified in the settings. When you want to make sure you received an entire sentence, we can use the new line character for example. To send the new line character, we need a function node.
The next option is to close after a fixed amount of characters. This can only be used if you know the length of the answer in advance. Important to note here is that characters such as new line are also counted. If the count is bigger than the actual length of the string, the request will never close. The last two options are never and immediately. The first option is used when you want to send data all the time. And the second one is if you don't expect or don't want any answer from the server. In the TCP in node you can also set the output to be a string. Now we create a TCP request which can dynamically connect to different TCP servers. For that we need an inject node where we set the port and the host property. Here we use localhost 2000 again. In the TCP request we just leave the text fields empty. As you see, it is not possible to send no payload. So we set one in the inject. We see that the connection works just like before. Now we create a new server which listens on port 2001. We can also remove the new line characters since we don't need it anymore. To select the different TCP servers, we use a dashboard dropdown. I like to use dashboards to test out dynamic code because it is very easy to try out all the possibilities without changing the code all the time. In the dropdown, we want to make sure that the values are 2000 and 2001. We use a change to set the value of the msg.port to msg.payload. Additionally, we set the host to localhost. By connecting the TCP output to a text output, we can directly see the server's answer on the dashboard. As we see, our client switches between the servers as we wanted it to. This is it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and you could learn something.